Okay, let's try it this way. All right, the quicker flipper. Now, I'm trying to see... Um, it does say guess at the bottom. Uh, let me know if you can, if you see anything down there. Uh, let's see here. I don't know what happened there. My okay, we back. We partying again. I don't know what the hell happened there. That, that scared me for a minute there, man. What's up? Oh, uh, yeah. I, I, I thought a bunch of your guests reported me and, you know, gave me the old liberal hammer. That does happen. That absolutely does happen. I've had several videos that have been reported and I've, I filed numerous appeals. Usually within a day or two, the appeal gets approved and I get my video back. But a lot of folks do not like the fact that I'm leaning left and I'm willing to reach out to folks on the right and we have a civil dialogue. A lot of people, when you watch these lives, you're either watching an all right wing live where they are criticizing the hell out of the left or just the opposite. You know, an issue like what we're doing here where we're actually having dialogue and nobody's hating on each other. You don't see that as much, as apparently, but yeah, some folks don't like it. Hey, hey, this right here that you're doing scares the living shit out of both Republican and Democrat people in power because what it's showing is that, hey, when you stop letting, letting the media tell you what these people are like, what a Democrat is like, what a Republican is like, and you have a conversation with them, you go, you know what, we're not all that different. We want the same things. We have a little bit different approach to how we think it ought to get done, but we generally want the same things. And we would actually go and have a soda together, you know, like 100%. We were, we're not. 100%. Enemy, you know I mean? If I was ever on, on your side of the country, you know, be like, hey, man, I'm swinging through. Let's let's eat, you know. Uh, anyhow. Um, yeah. But so what do you what do you think about my my comparison here? Hunter Biden versus um, President Trump. Now. Obviously, the right believes President Trump has really done nothing wrong and is just a witch hunt and that Hunter Biden is corrupt as can be. Why do you think that? Let's start with the right. Why do you think they believe Trump is innocent and Biden is guilty so much? Uh, because I think Trump is rather innocent. And I'll put it this way. You know, just like the same guest that I, I was criticizing um, you know, oh, we'll, we'll give weapons to Yemen if Saudi Arabia doesn't give, give us oil. And it's like, oh, quid pro quo is cool now. You know, so you, you got to not like it on whether it's benefiting your political belief system or not, you know. And what I think really flustered Democrats in the in, in the top of the DNC is that they started investigating quid pro quo behind uh, Trump and Zelensky. And then they uncovered a bunch of unsavory stuff about Democrats. And then the cat was out of the bag and they're like, God dang it. You know, and, <laughs> and well, let me ask you this, though. When you when you talk about, you know, calling a spade a spade, calling strikes a strike, no matter which side is up. What about what happened on January 6th? You think let's say Obama did the same thing. You think the right would view that as just a peaceful protest? No, of course. Like if uh, I'll use a better example, because Maxine Waters actually said it. If people went and burnt down a town after Maxine Waters, we'd absolutely hold her accountable. I, I see what people are upset at Trump with. I don't think they should be upset at their fellow countrymen for it. If you genuinely believe that democracy is lost and stolen from you, it is incumbent upon you to take your grievance to the government. That's why. And I know, you know, we've had this talk before. You know, why do we always compare January 6th to, to BLM uh, protests that ended up with uh, destruction and violence and stuff like that? And my I will die on this hill. They are both people who are taking their grievance to their government in different ways. And when I thought of it that way, I totally started to understand and have a little bit more compassion for, for BLM movement. Uh, uh, what do we want to call them? Activities that, that went awry. You know what I mean? Well, let me, uh, let me give it to you this way. Let me give it to, I'm gonna, and I'm going to use BLM. That's a really good comparison because I do agree with you that both of those sides, whether it's the MAGA folks on January 6th or BLM, both believe that the government is being tyrannical to them and they, their, their outcry is not being listened to. But let me ask you this question. BLM, in regards to Ferguson, Missouri, they believed that a an African American was wrongfully shot. And Obama sent the Justice Department there, and it turns out the cop 
that shot the African American was justified in doing so. So, in other words, BLM rioted in the town of Ferguson based on what turns out to be a lie. And I'm comparing that because January 6th is also looking the same way, is that they believed that the election was stolen from them. And the evidence, just like Obama's Justice Department, appears to be suggesting that what Trump had folks believe on January 6th was a lie. Now, we held Black Lives Matter accountable for rioting over a lie. Do you look at the protesters on January 6th in a similar manner? I'm starting to more and more, you know, uh, there's that inherent bias when you're like, yeah, I think the election was stolen, or I at least think that there was some very uh, unkosher stuff. Well, there. Me, like, I'm going to let you continue, but let me interrupt and say everything you're going to say in regards to the MAGA folks on January 6th, those folks protesting in Ferguson also thought ex- they were just as passionate about what they were doing, despite what the evidence came back and said, they believed that that African-American was killed, regardless of the evidence, just like January 6th protesters believed the election was stolen, regardless of the evidence. So they have a lot of parallels, but go ahead. Right, and nowhere in the Constitution does it say you should burn down your neighbor's liquor store, or does it say you should burn down the Capitol? You know what I mean? So, right. When it comes to the thousands and thousands of people that marched on Washington, absolutely, that's their constitutional right. Send them home. Same with BLM protesters. You know, when they're out there on the streets, even as if they're as far as blocking cars, like that shit pisses me off. Don't block an ambulance or a fire truck. But if you take them to the streets and it messes up traffic, so be it. You've got a grievance to express, right? But the minute you start causing problems, damage and so the, basically to me the january 6 people who were physically inside of the capitol then yeah they they, they need to be punished they need or they need to be uh you know they, they need to see a jury um you know because the thing is we, what we we need to stop doing is allowing people to exercise their constitutional rights so long as they agree with me right and so if people like are gonna that. if people are gonna march on washington the same as mlk did and they feel that they're the same as, as on January 6th as, as it was MLK. We need to look. MLK didn't go burning down the Capitol. He didn't go kicking down Capitol doors. He didn't cause property damage. They marched and they made. So what about hurt. what about Trump? What How do you feel about Trump suggesting that if he got reelected in 2024, he would consider pardoning those involved on January 6th? Um. I'll preface this with, I think, president's pardon on both parties. A lot of people that shouldn't get pardons. Um, it, it, that, that's, the, that's the ultimate good old boy club there is watch the last week of any presidency. Um, that being said, you know, I don't hold that in any different light than when Biden said, I'm going to I'm going to put a black woman in the Supreme Court. Right. When you preface something with you know, uh, how, how do I want to articulate this? That I'm going to do something that is not exactly the way it's supposed to be done. I'm going to pardon people that uh, have committed a crime, right? Um, and if you want to be pardoned of your crime, elect me. That's no different than when Biden basically said, wow. if you are a white you woman. You really or- compare those two? Yeah, yes. Yes, and and, okay. and here's why, right. and and here's why I'm comparing it because you are alienating people before you've even done something. You know what I mean? You're saying, basically, Biden. Uh, I know that they don't equate, but what I'm saying is, when Biden says, "If you're a white male or a white woman or a Hispanic male or whatever, you got no shot at the seat," and it's like, well, we got a lot of equal opportunity laws that are supposed to protect that discrimination, even if. This is the the numbers show that we are due for a black woman on the Supreme Court, right? I I'm not despite you know, right? So when Trump says, "Oh, I'm going to pardon these people," first of all, before they've even been convicted of their crime, but secondly, the idea that I will get you out of Dodge if you do, if you get me elected, and I think it's mostly politics, but it's just like, uh, you can't basically say it's okay to violate the constitution and we're going to do it this way or that way 
I think both and on both sides you're doing that. You know? I, 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 I get, yeah, I, I kind of get what you're saying, but I, I guess I don't know. I, I, and I've heard plenty of folks complain about Biden stating that his next vice president or next Supreme Court justice is going to be a black person. And in my opinion, the only thing Biden did wrong compared to all previous presidents is he actually made it clear what he was going to do, because make no mistake about it. When we knew when, what is it? Where we on the 46th president? I'd say at least 40 of those presidents. We already knew when they appointed a Supreme Court judge, it was going to be a white male. I mean, and, and yeah, so only thing Biden did different than him is he actually said it. But we, the, I mean, all of those, the first 40 presidents never came out and said, my next appointee is going to be a white male. But everybody knew that. They knew if you were a female or if you were a minority, you weren't going to make it to the Supreme Court. So the same, the same way, you know, we all wish Trump had somebody there to shut him up. Biden probably should have had somebody that's right there to tell him to shut up. And what if that didn't work out? What if the Senate would not confirm and all of a sudden the only options left on the table were going to be an old white dude? That would have been like the worst political blunder in history is to say my job, my 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 constitutional authority is to nominate somebody and I'm going to do X, Y, Z and you can't even do X, Y, Z, even though it's like, oh, that would have been terrible for him. Yeah, and I, I do agree. It's always good to have a man behind a man. But look, I got to move it on, man. I do appreciate you coming back and making sure this damn thing works. So I don't know what they did the first time. Uh, you know, it's it's just they're trying to silence a uh, good conversation, man. <laughs> Something Thank like that. I'll catch Thanks you on the next go around. All right. Okay, going back. Uh, real quick, Trump could have pardoned all of them criminals when he was in office. You know, that's a good point. Why didn't he do that? Um I don't know if he figured that him pardoning those folks before he left would have been too controversial. I don't know because of how bad January 6th looked, but yeah, you know, at the very least, when you look at how much money Trump has raised for the election defense fund, which obviously has no need if the election was actually legitimate. Or better yet, he hasn't proved that the election was stolen. So where's all his money? Should have gave it to some of them folks. How many of you guys think out there in regards to the folks who were arrested on January 6th or in regards to January 6th? Because they truly were doing that for President Trump. Do you not think that Trump should provide some form of assistance, bail money or legal? I mean, Trump got access to an endless string of lawyers. Why not provide them with free legal counsel? I mean, you raised 200 and some million dollars for an election defense fund, and clearly it's not going to produce any significant results. I mean, Biden is almost in his second year at this point, so clearly the the, the likelihood of proving that the election was stolen is probably not going to happen. So, yeah, why not help out some of those folks who, you know, bit the bullet for you and ended up doing time? All right, going back to the box. Uh, 52 cent. Let's try it this way. Uh, you mean like the rioters and they were later arrested? Harris bailed out rioters. I have not heard it. 52 cent. Good evening. I had an interesting run in on Saturday. Sure. What's going on? My friend retired and it was his birthday and his wife put together at a local UAW hall. They have uh, shelter houses out behind, six or eight of them. And she put okay. together a retirement slash birthday party. Well, she asked me to come play music because I have a karaoke sound system. So I'm driving through the park, and what do I see? Tent set up, a trailer, speakers, microphone, Democrat signs. Well, I put... Let's go Brandon on the radio in my Cadillac. And I got a nice Bose system. And I crank it up just a little. Oh, my God. You are the and I, drive, I drive by. Well, they weren't there yet. So I went out in the parking lot amongst the cars. And I called my friend. And I said, where you at? They said, we're about 20 minutes out. I said, do you want me to just pick a shelter house? I said, the big one is taken. I said, uh, I'll just get a shelter house. They said, okay. 
So I drove by a second time playing Red Kingdom. I'm and, not uh, familiar with that. Wait a minute. What do you mean? Oh, you, you're talking about communists. <laughs> Red, no, the Kansas City Chiefs song. Red Kingdom. Oh, my Red gosh. Kingdom. Well, anyways, I, I didn't say anything to him. I didn't point at him. I didn't give him my IQ with my middle finger. It's one, damn it. I didn't do anything. I parked the car at a shelter house all the way across the property from him. Get out my speakers, start setting them up, and here comes this ganky, queer-looking dude with a camera trying to take my picture. Well, every time he tries, I get behind a tree where he can't get it or a post in the shelter house where he can't get it or my speakers. He comes all the way around, comes up behind my car, photographing my license plate, which is 52 cent, by the way. It's not hard to remember. <laughs> and he finally gets a picture of me. I throw him the bird, and I go back to setting on my speakers. I never said a word to him. So then these two people are coming across the property, and, boy, they didn't look happy. And I'm just going about my business, and they come up. They said, we don't want any trouble around here. I said, Trouble from what? You know what I'm oh, talking wait about. Minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. You because there there are songs out there. I, there's a rap group that has an F Trump song, and I think um, I don't. I think Eminem says something. But I mean, if if you showed up to a MAGA rally playing some anti-Trump music, obviously that is asking for trouble. You would you would understand that, right? But I'd have to just show them that that song is regularly on my playlist. And perhaps okay, it was it well. I mean, I like NWA's "Fuck the Police," but I'm not going to pull outside of police headquarters and say that's on my playlist. I mean, you understand that's causing trouble, right? Well, these two people come up to me, and they said, "We don't want any trouble." I said, "If you didn't want trouble, you wouldn't have sent that guy over here to try to take my picture." Okay, I'm not bothering you. I didn't say a word to you. I'm at the opposite side of the park from you. You've come out of your way to approach me. I sure as hell ain't going over there to you. I said, there's 150 of you. There's one of me. I said, so let me, he said, so let me ask you this question. Being honest, you weren't trying to spark any type of reaction. The music you were playing, it wasn't meant for them at all, correct? It was no louder than their speakers. Throwing out the that liberal. Ain't what I'm you. You know, that ain't what I'm asking you. You when you played that, it was not aimed to get any attention from them at all, correct? You were just listening to that. No different than Frank Sinatra or something on the radio, correct? Frank Sinatra, uh 50 Cent, uh Little Tupac, no different. Okay. All right. So let me ask no, you this I, question. You know full well I did it on purpose. Hey, damn right. Okay, so let me ask you this question. What what is it about at least the folks on the right that believe Hunter Biden is guilty as hell, but Trump is not guilty of anything. Because Trump is speculation, and with Hunter Biden, they got a laptop. They got so hard evidence. Say, okay, fair, fair point. Now, when you say Hunter Biden got the laptop, how do you know that? Because that's the reports that have come out. So why aren't you relieving the reports that are coming out on Trump? Because I support Trump. <laughs> <laughs> At least you're honest. <laughs> and that's what I was going, that's what I was wondering. Okay, so you, you don't believe what's on Trump simply because you favor Trump. Well, there's a difference between hard evidence and a witch hunt that is basically one-sided with no defense. Now, well, if, if Hunter Biden goes to court, He's going to have a defense. This January 6th dog and pony show, there's no defense. It's all one no, side. But in, here's what I don't get. If the if the attorney general who is sworn to uphold his duty to the United States of America testifies under oath that I told Trump the election was legitimately held, you don't consider that as evidence at all that he actually did tell Trump the election was properly held? Once again, where was his proof? 
Where was his vote audits? Where was his review of, of footage in the voting stations? Where was any of that? Yeah, that's just him saying, I think it was held legally. Where's his proof? Well, he didn't exactly exactly. He didn't just say it was held legally. He also did they did go down all of the all of the things that were claimed in two thousand mules, that were claimed from Trump, that were claimed from the right, that were claimed from Q. He went through all of that and itemized why that stuff was not true. Now he's a sworn member of the Trump administration. That Trump, he, he's essentially America's top cop under the Trump administration. They investigated all that and, and came back that that stuff did not happen. And they advised Trump for that. Is that not you're evidence? Aware that of, you're aware of my feelings. I don't care if Trump gets reelected or not. I care that a liberal doesn't. We're not, yeah, but we're not you're, talking about that. We're talking about whereas okay. does Trump have culpability and what happened on January 6th, knowing that he was advised by the top cop that they investigated the election thoroughly and came back and told him this was not stolen. Yet he went to the Capitol building on January 6th, telling his supporters that it was stolen. Well, when he was at that rally, he told people to go peacefully. If they did, yeah, but, but why? Why? That's why not on him. Have these yeah, but the the problem is why do you, why are you angry in these people telling them something that you've been advised is not true? Well, you, I don't know. Fuck, the <laughs> twenty twenty four. I, I don't care who it is, providing it's not a fucked up liberal. I don't care if you know if if Mickey Mouse wants to be president and he. Is anti-liberal? Mickey Mouse get my fucking vote. Okay, fair Trump enough. was controversial <laughs> from the very minute he said he was going to run. From the very minute he even made mention. Remember Obama's drop the mic statement. At least I was could say I was president. Yeah. Everybody thought it was a joke. Yeah. And by God, he he proved them wrong, didn't he? That is and true. the whole thing was a joke. Um, well, and I, I said but I really true. believe that Trump loves America, and I really believe the things he tried to do was for the benefit of America. Then let me I ask really you do this. believe that. Okay, fair enough. And let me ask you this then. Do you believe that a, a president DeSantis, let's say Trump didn't run, do you think DeSantis could turn this country around and get in on the same direction as President Trump? All right. Are the liberals going to try to impeach him twice? And and is the media going to dog him every day? And are the late night talk shows gonna, show hosts going to dog him every episode? You know, if you hit your head on the helicopter or if you fall down the stairs, make a joke. But don't start every program. And I tested uh, that one late night guy, that David Muir. During COVID, I made it a point to watch him for 30 consecutive days to see what he did. And the beginning of every episode, with the exception of one day when there was a mass school shooting, snowball. Or well, have you? Yeah, but but have you? Did you listen to let's say Rush Limbaugh during the Obama administration? I didn't listen to Rush Limbaugh at all. What about Sean Hannity during the Obama administration? I don't watch news, dude. Well, I don't believe I don't believe the right when they say something, and I don't believe the left when they say something. Okay, well, the point I'm trying to make is that you asked if DeSantis ran, would he get hammered like Trump? The point I'm trying to make is that they all get hammered that way. It depends on what news organization you're watching. Fox News is no more fair to Obama than CNN is to Trump. They were talking about the color of the, the the color of his suit, him not wearing a flag lapel. They got into a debate and they complained that the flag wasn't on the stage. They were complaining about some of the most petty shit possible. So I'm just simply saying that when Trump gets up there and says they didn't treat him fair, that's not unique to Trump. And keep in mind, Trump was also claiming that Obama was born in Kenya. So it's not like 
the, the previous presidents had it great, and Trump was the only one that they got mistreated. Trump himself was involved in that nasty stuff. I'm about to say probably the most racist thing you've ever heard me say. Okay, but, let's have it. But as a, but as a country that just had their biggest skyscrapers hit by planes to elect a man with a middle name Hussein was moronic. No, it's not. First of all, we got hit by planes in 2001. Obama took office in 2008, and by then we were already involved in a war in a country that had nothing to do with it. There's a lot of factors there. Well, when a president that you elect's middle name is a Middle Eastern middle name or a Muslim middle name, when your biggest current enemy at the time is Muslim, mm -hmm. that's a pretty stupid thing to do. So does it make sense for the evangelicals to elect a guy that's been divorced four times and claim he's never asked God for forgiveness? I'm telling you, Trump fooled everybody. He's a master manipulator. But I truly believe he had, when he went to fight with NATO and said, you guys need to pay your fair share to all this stuff. And when he pulls out of some of these climate deals and this global, this Climate change bullshit is nothing human beings can stop. It's going to happen regardless. There was an ice age. People forget I dinosaurs were yeah, killed. You're, yeah, you're above my pay grade on that. I can't. Comp I can't talk about the ice age and, and what. I, well, I'm not coming. a climate scientist. Yeah, I can't speak on that. I, I can hear what you're saying, but I don't know if climate change is coming or not. I'm. That's one. I'm going to throw the same argument I give for COVID. I'm not a virologist. I'm going to trust the science. I know that's the liberal in me, but these are not things I do for a living. Same thing with the election. I don't deal with ballots. So if the people who deal with the election say this happened, that's who I'm going to believe. So as far as the climate, I'm not a climate. I'm not a climate guy. So I can't tell some scientist that spends his entire life studying climate that he don't know what the hell he's talking about. I don't know. Well, what I'm saying is, the steps that Trump took, making us energy independent, which sure would be nice about now. Okay. He wasn't pushing this green crap. These electric cars, until our electric grid is up to snuff, are a stupid idea. And to force them down everybody's throat is stupid. And no, the earth isn't flat, you moron. Um. <laughs> All right, I got I got to move it on. I'll let you wrap it up. I got to move it on, though, man. All right, brother. <laughs> All right, always a pleasure, man. And I, that Hussein comment, yeah, that was pretty wild. That was that was the most racist thing I've ever heard you say. But you're welcome back. Like I said, we don't censor anything. Catch you later. But it was a fact. What was his middle name? Oh wait, we never got his birth certificate. Never mind. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> All right, now. Clearly, I don't agree with that shit. I, I don't know where my, my... I normally keep my cup around here that it has um, Obama's birth certificate on the back of it. But, yeah, not voting for the president. And by the way, what he said in regards to Barack Obama's middle name, there are a lot of folks that did not vote for him because of that. So what he's saying, although it sounds quite bigoted, it's, yeah, it's true. Um, wasn't there an older uh, white woman during the McCain town hall? that stated she wasn't going to vote for Obama because he was Muslim. And make no mistake about it, the folks on the right, and by the way, folks, give my, give my likes up to 5,000. This is decent content. We talk and we don't, we don't censor anything. MAGA friendly audience, tap the screen, get your boy likes up. Um, the right certainly took part in playing Obama up as a Muslim. So when that woman commented that I'm not going to vote for Obama because he's a Muslim, she got that from somewhere. And the odd thing is, is that Hannity and a lot of folks were in Obama's church. Remember the chickens are coming home to roost and his his uh, Baptist preacher that was the Obama's preacher for 20 years in Chicago was saying all these anti-American things. Everybody knew he wasn't a Muslim and that that church that they were going in was a Baptist church. Everybody, I mean, I know where that church is in Chicago. It's an African-American pastor. It's a Baptist church. So they were using the church 
to attack Obama because his pastor was saying a bunch of anti-American shit. But then when they want to play him up as a Muslim, they were using that too. And there were plenty of right-wingers that were buying both of those things. Uh, going to political TikTok in the... Or in the box, rather. Uh, let me see. And by the way, folks, feel free to follow the program. We're here every night. Definitely always good to hear from you guys. What's political TikTok. On? None at all. Let me see. I turned my camera on today. I think I can do that. Uh, there you go. I was able okay. to write. I was, a, you know, I was in the box for a little while, which is fine. I mean, I don't have a problem waiting, but I was able to write down. Appreciate it. Things. I was able to write down a couple things we wanted to address. Uh, Let's first do of all, it. Biden, uh, Biden with the border, with the border wall. Did you hear that Mexico is going to pay? I believe it's one point two or one point eight for border security and upgrading uh, equipment for protecting the border. I did hear that, and, he, and I didn't hear that on the right-wing media, but I have heard yeah. that. So, actually, so if you look at that, Joe Biden actually got them to sign a check. Remember, Trump said he was going to get them to do it, but like you said, he, well, trade deals, trade, no. Well, Biden actually got them to sign a check. So that's something. That's a good point. I can't argue yeah. that. I'll look. Uh, I'll look in the comments because I'm sure folks in the comments will push back. But and they're saying 1.5 yeah. billion. That is that's a yeah. really good point. I would right. love to see what my right wingers have to say about that because I'm going to concede that's a good point. But go yeah. ahead. Well, I was going to say, but see, they won't give no credit on that. I also wanted to say about the border. Uh, they they they're record captures at the border. So this whole notion that people that the border is just open, I think, is not true because they're being captured at record levels. I think even the most FBI wanted personnel, it's like five or six of them have been caught at the United States border. So to say the border is just wide open and nothing's being done is a false narrative. Well, uh, and I will and I will add to that because somebody Kevin Roberts in the comments has suggested Mexico always spends that in border security. Well, if you believe they always spend that, then why is folks say the border is wide open? If if Mexico is spending money to protect the border and you're catching smuggled immigrants in the United States dead in the back of a truck, this clearly points out that the border is not wide open. Otherwise, you wouldn't have Mexico spending money. You wouldn't have people needing to smuggle folks in causing them a large amount of loss of life. If the borders were open, they could just walk across. So right. these, the, the activities that are happening, and then, of course, when Obama was in office, they were saying the same thing about him until Trump got cast ties for separating families. Then it became an issue where Obama did it too. No, he was for open borders. So the open border comment, yeah, it's always, it, it never holds up to conversation. But go ahead, man. Uh, the next point, the guy was saying something about the Supreme Court and her, uh, him choosing a black woman. Uh, yes. many, many presidents have said they're going to either choose a woman or choose a whatever, whatever. When Joe Biden, give me some examples. Trump, give me some examples. I believe Trump said that he would nominate a woman when he chose Amy Coney, AD, ABC, whatever they call her. Um, Amy Coney Barrett. Did he? Let me look that up. That would be a. That also would be a good point. I don't know if I remember hearing him say that, but if he did, that is a legitimate point, I, and I will be using that in the future if that happens. Go ahead. Um, I wanted to think of. I'm pretty sure, and I'm not a hundred percent sure because I just got into politics. But I believe Obama had even said that he would choose a Hispanic when he chose that lady. Uh you talking about Sotomayor? Yes. Uh, and I, I'm and, looking in the uh, here's PolitiFact. The minute I, I actually Googled Trump said he was going to nominate a woman, Amy Comey Barrett, and apparently PolitiFact is saying no. Trump didn't say he nominated Amy Comey Barrett because she is much. Oh, wait a minute. Hang on. Keep going. I'm, let me. Well, this, this, says, is Trump, that, this says, and I'm, this is CNN, so I don't know how, whatever, but it says Trump on Supreme Court this September 19th. It will be a woman. Okay. Well, then I need to, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look more into that because if he did say that, that is a pretty good comeback to President Biden yeah. said he's going to Here's nominate the a black quote. woman. It says, President Trump says, I will be putting forth a nominee next week. It will be a woman. 
Well, if he said he's going to put forth the nominee next week, that would the I'm going to just play devil's advocate because I, I want to be able to give you what the pushback would be. And that would be he didn't say that until he had already picked the person out, had already screened the person, had already vetted the person. If he's saying by next week, yeah, he don't already. That's not to say he didn't go through a bunch of black males or white males or anybody else and choose. He's talking about somebody he don't already picked out and he's going to announce it. Whereas Biden said at the moment he got elected in office and he hadn't picked yeah. anybody out yet. So well, Biden when made he it was clear, running, I'm not even well, going to. Well, I think even when he was running for office, he told us it would be a black woman. Well, and what I'm saying is that based on what you're presenting on Trump. It's not the same because Biden made it clear that I haven't selected anybody yet, but I'm only going to select from a pool of black women. Whereas you're saying with Trump, he's saying next week I'm going to nominate. So I'm going to announce who I've already nominated, which could mean he picked between whites, blacks and everybody. So, yeah, I don't think those two are the same. So I don't. Yeah, that probably would not be a good comeback. But keep going. I, I mean, I, I, yeah, I mean, I get, I see what you, because you said, I will put forth a nominee next week and it will be a woman. So I guess you could argue to say he was saying that well, the person that he's going to choose is going to be a woman, not necessarily that it had to be a woman. That's what you're saying. Yeah, because if you're telling he's going to put forth a nominee next week, you would have to assume he's already, no, he already don't pick that person out. You don't nominate somebody to the Supreme Court in a, well, Trump is special, but normally you don't pick somebody in a week's time. You do a lot more vetting and stuff like that than a week. Right. So, yeah, so my but guess I even is, think, I mean, my pushback with it, that was when Biden said, I'm going to nominate a black woman, he already knew who he was going to nominate. No, because he had, no, because he wasn't even positioned to nominate anybody yet. He hadn't even got elected. Right. He wasn't in the position to do so. Right. However, uh, Obama had planned on, well, he talked about nominating Kate, whatever her name was, you know, whatever. Oh well, we'll we'll, we'll agree to disagree on that. We'll Maybe agree to disagree. Okay, move. On. Okay, go on yeah, to the next, next one. Next time, I'll get uh, some more information on that and bring that back. Uh, you were saying earlier why Trump probably wouldn't pardon the people from January sixth before he left office. Uh, yeah, they they weren't convicted. So it's hard to pardon someone who's not been convicted. Well, you could you could offer a you could offer a conviction you could offer a pardon before they're before they're uh, convicted though because he he actually talked about apparently and I understand a lot of my audience is not going to believe this but apparently he talked about pardoning himself and, and issuing a pardon for his own family. Also, keep in mind from the January six hearings, it appears that several Congress people approach him for pardons and they haven't been convicted of anything so right. clearly he can clearly those pardons are valuable even if you have been convicted you can actually pardon yourself proactively yeah but i wouldn't see doing that because then you have to say that you admit it you're admitting that you you broke a crime you can, read, you can work you can work here's how you can do that coming from somebody like trump I already understand the liberal media is going to try some bullshit on my folks trying to exercise their First Amendment rights. So to prevent CNN and the liberal media from enacting any bullshit after I'm gone, I'm going to issue a pardon to protect my people from anything that was involved in regards to their First Amendment rights on January 6th. That's okay. all you got to say. And that was I, 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 That's another thing I'll look into, because to me, I, this doesn't make sense that you could pardon yourself when you haven't even been charged with something you know i don't know maybe okay that's the, the law thing, I, I, I understand it might not make sense but that's the way it is right no i mean but like you said you're you're getting ready for something because my whole thing is then you can just charge someone with something different you know unless it's just so broad where you're covering all potential charges that that's what i'm saying Right. Well, you could you could certainly pardon him for anything that was involved on federal property that day on January 6th. Okay. Uh, the next thing we was going to have on here was the gas prices. Uh, and I did see that clip of Joe Biden taking somewhat of credit. Was that when he was talking to the guy in Mexico, uh, the Mexican in the White No, House? I believe, you know, some, I, in my, I, I don't know. I saw it quickly, but I did listen to it. I was driving when it was playing. I don't know who else was present there that day with him, but I can easily find it. But, yeah, he certainly took credit for it. Right. Okay, but well, let me ask you this, and you even said, why, well, why haven't we heard Republicans give him credit for it if it's been his fault? Wait, repeat that? 
why haven't Republicans given him credit for gas prices going down if it's his fault? Good, good question. It's, it's called politics. The same reason why he didn't take credit when it was going up. When you're right. when you're a politician, and Trump is no stranger to this, you take credit for the good and you blame the bad on other people. They all do that. Okay. Um, one last thing. Well, it was two last things. I, it was a question for you. Why are so many people anti-media? They always are the media, the media, the this we we believe in freedom of press. I mean, if that's what people, you know, if people want to watch CNN and they're being brain, why so anti news? Would would they rather not have news at all? I mean, that's what no, I and I right don't, here. and I don't, I believe the free. A lot of this started with Sarah Palin, the lame stream media. In now on the right, make no mistake about it, most media is does lean left to some degree. And it's right. mainly because, at least in my opinion, a humble correspondent, I believe that most media leans left because the right is not very malleable. They are rigid and want to keep America based on tradition. And most of America has moved away from that. You know, a lot of the way the traditional founding fathers set things up, which was incredibly masculine, incredibly white, anti-everything. And most of the media doesn't favor that. So that's probably one reason why a large portion of media does not lean right. And certainly when it comes to the younger generation who likes to smoke a joint, who is not very religious, who is anti-police in a lot of cases, they don't fit the mantra of what the right is. So I believe a lot of that has to do with it. But it, why does most people dislike the media? I don't think that's true, even though they say that. I believe everybody likes the media when the media says what they want to hear. I hear a lot of right wingers talking about how much they hate the media. They don't have any problem with what comes out of OAN or Newsmax. So right. or, or Rush Limbaugh getting a presidential medal of freedom. They were fine with that. Yeah. So they're okay with media. Just okay. not the media that just not the media. Their like, okay, that makes sense. Right. Because when I hear that, it's so ant it makes me think they feel like we would be better off without media. We would be a better off without no. CNN without any of these places out there saying anything. Uh, well, they believe question. they believe the media. They believe the media is divisive, and that somehow the country might be more united if the media wasn't portraying bad images. Okay, so just them. Okay, my last question for you, and maybe it's just you know you like you love the MAGA people, so I can. Well, I know you like talking to them, so you can understand. Absolutely, them a yes. more. yeah. You can understand them a little bit more. Why do they <laughs> okay. say? Why do they say they love Donald Trump? You know, love is such a strong word. Love is um, is as if they know him personally when they speak of him. You know, I can sit here and say, you know, I like Joe Biden. I think he's a cool guy. Whatever, whatever, whatever. <laughs> I, I'm not going to sit here and say, I love Joe Biden. I, I don't know Joe Biden. Joe Biden doesn't know me. Why are these Trump supporters? I mean, they wear his hats. They have his flags. They have his clothes. It's like a personality call. Why are they in love with someone that they don't really know and they've never met? Okay, I'm going to try to answer, even though I'm not MAGA, but I, I'm going to use my spidey senses because I do believe I can connect with MAGA in some cases. Have you ever been to a, I mean, I don't know if you're religious or not, but have you ever been to church and, and actually had a really good sermon? Right. You ever yeah. felt like the pastor, the pastor giving that sermon that you thoroughly enjoyed was almost speaking directly to you? Right. That's Trump, is that he is speaking to them on a level that no other politician has ever spoke. The, the things that you, no matter how you, imagine how you want America to be. And I'm assuming that the way you want America to be, there every politician you've ever come across has maybe met some of those goals, but a lot of them they didn't meet. Maybe they were too corrupt or they thought about themselves or they were money oriented or to them, Trump checks off almost all of the boxes in regards to how they want America to be. And right. he's the first guy they've ever seen do that. They've always seen politicians that appear to be corrupt, appear to be greedy, some of them selling out the damn country, whatever. He comes along and he appears to be checking off every box like no other. That is where the love comes from. Wow. Okay, well, that's where, I mean, I'm happy you clicked because 
to, I feel like to love, like with the pastor, I see my pastor every Sunday. I know him. I know his family. So I can say, man, I love my pastor. Man, my pastor's there. You, why is it? And even Trump tells him, remember doing the thing, go home. We love you. We love you. It's going to be, what? love? What? What's going, <laughs> what's going on? You guys are not, you know, and that's what I'm saying. They wear the hats. They got the flag. I mean, I go out just, I think it was Friday night at the casino. Guy came in, MAGA hat, let's go Brandon shirt. I mean, it's a Friday night. I mean, <laughs> I, that's what I don't understand. Why is this so, this devotion to him as if he's some, like you said, a god or something. That's just weird to me. But I'll let you go. I'll talk to you. All right. Appreciate it. I can't explain right. the God part, but I appreciate it. And, um, and, and, and yeah, I've talked to a lot of MAGA over the last five, six years. Or When did Trump come along? 2015 came down the escalator, I believe, in, uh, what was it, the summer of 2015? And, yeah, we started talking. Because I've been talking to Republicans and GOP folks for 20-plus years. Been calling into Fox News and talking to Kill Me and O'Reilly, talking to a bunch of them on air, debating them. And yeah, when I started talking to Republicans about Trump when he came down the escalator, and from that point on, and yeah, there are there are some folks out there that have a cult like mentality, for lack of a better word. And when I say cult like mentality, I mean what he said: I could kill somebody in the middle of Fifth Avenue, and my supporters would go nowhere. That's not a liberal making that up. Came out of his own mouth. Why would he say something like that if he? did not feel that way. So even he believes that I have some cult followers. I mean, does Obama have any of those? Does Biden? Maybe, but they never made a comment like that. So if they do have followers like that, either they're keeping it to themselves or they don't realize it. He realized it and he orated it out in public. So it is what it is. Okay, going to the box, the right libertarian guy. Okay, so I... You're coming from the right libertarian guy. Let's make it happen. Uh, what? Hey, good evening. Can you hear me all right? Loud and clear, sir. Excellent. Yeah, so as you can probably tell, I'm more libertarian than I I really don't consider myself a Republican, but I do lean more conservative. Yeah, uh, at the end of the day, you guys, because there's very little chance a libertarian candidate's going to win, at the end of the day, you t you guys do tend to vote for the Republican guy, right? Yeah, and I'll tell you why. Because uh, libertarians re believe in minimal, absolute minimal government interference in the day-to-day -day life. And, so let me ask uh, you this then. Okay, mm -hmm. I'll let you continue. But let me ask you this. If, for, for a libertarian like yourself that believes in, you know, very little government intervention in day-to-day -day life, how do you feel about rolling back Roe v. Wade, which is expanding government, at least into the lives of women? Well, I believe that that's where it does get a little bit tricky uh, because okay. I, I'm pro the overturn of Roe v. Wade for the simple fact that it takes it out of the federal government's hands. Because if we're being honest, and I think this is somewhere where the left, right, and everywhere in between can kind of come to a consensus on, the federal government touches something, they fuck it up 11 okay. times out of 10. Uh, well, so. let me let me follow up your comment, in, like you said, in regards to if we're being honest. And I will say, if we're being honest, we would realize that the Republican goal is a federal nationwide ban on abortion. Yeah, which is why I think it's good that it's it's back to the states. And no, no, you, you didn't hear what I'm. You didn't hear what I'm. You didn't hear what I'm saying. I'm saying the goal of the Republicans is to ultimately enact a federal nationwide ban on abortion. Right now, they've okay, gotten it back to the states. Yeah, they've gotten it. Just like, if the, just like the liberals, if they could have their way, they would have a ban on guns. But they would settle in the meantime for returning it back to the states. That way, liberal states could already start by banning guns. But the goal ultimately would be to ban most guns nationwide. That is what the right intends to do, is a nationwide abortion ban. But right now, they're settling for states' rights. Yeah, and uh, even though I am, uh, I'm not even going to say pro-life, I'm anti-abortion myself, uh, I think there should, there needs to be consensus 
reach that federal government cannot make any ruling in regards to it because the honestly the less things that are in the purview of the federal government the better their real purpose is to do nothing but uh, protect that constitution okay so let me let me ask you this question as a as a fan a more of a fan of states rights how do you feel about america's history of states rights i mean the reason we have expanded federal government as opposed to individual states' rights, which is what the country was founded on. The reason why we went away from that is because so many states were using their rights to abuse and oppress people. So how do you feel about potentially going back to states' rights, hoping that they won't do what they have a history of doing? So I think uh, there is a history in it, and uh, I would say that's the culmination of uh, bad people coming to power and abusing states' rights. I don't think that was a difference. Which is our nation, which is the hist- which is the primary history of this nation. Yes, and uh to be honest, uh I feel like that's really where the second amendment comes into play when uh and it should have come into play a lot sooner uh in regards to what was going on, you know, back in the 1800s and uh there should have been more good people. Uh, like I think at this point in our history, uh, I'd, I'd like to think, you know, 99.99999% well, of mean, people okay. would here's, the, here's the issue I, yeah, Here's the issue I have with that. Let's say, for instance, a state uses their right to roll back same-sex marriage. We don't believe a man should be able to marry a man in our state. You think that Americans, let's let's say this happens in Alabama. We know Alabama is not very friendly to this. You think the the Second Amendment folks in Alabama would, would be willing to take up arms and use their Second Amendment rights against the government to protect the LGBT community in that state? Um, I can't speak on Alabama specifically because I'm not from there, never been there. Uh, but I am, of my personal mind, I don't think... Uh, any marriage should be illegal nor illegal. I don't think the government should have anything to do with it. I think it should be between a man and a woman, and if they believe so, between their church and their God. And as far as the legal aspects, like, you know, like uh, what you get when you, you know, split up, that should be handled by a, you know, person-to-person contract, notarized by the court, and the actual government shouldn't be involved in anybody's marriage. Because, again, that comes back to... When the gov- federal government gets involved, they fuck everything up, and your marriage isn't really something you want them fucking up. Right, but you think the states would be better at protecting the rights of minorities like same-sex marriage? You think the states would do a better job with that than the federal government? Well, I don't think marriage should be a legal thing at all. Wait, but you don't think we should be able to get married? I don't get what you mean. No, 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 no. I think marriage should be between the two individuals uh, if they believe in such things, their church and God. And when it comes to stuff like uh, asset division, uh, God forbid they do split up, uh, that can be all handled in, you know, civil court through a contract. It really yeah, but if you got, if you leave it, yeah, but if you, if you leave it to the states and you got Christian-based Christian based states like in the Bible Belt areas, they may not be a fan of allowing you to divorce at all. I mean, if, if you really look at religion, religion sh- shuns on divorce. That's what they believe in marriage till death do you part. You may find yourself in one of those states under states' rights not being able to get divorced at all or having an extensive waiting period. Yeah, but on the same hand, you don't have to live in that state. Yeah, that, I mean, that's a good point, I suppose. But if you get married in, in the state of Alabama and you decide to move to California because you don't like the bride you got married to, you, are you suggesting California could allow you out of a marriage that you still have existing in Alabama? I think if, uh, again, under my purview, what I was explaining, uh, if there's not a asset division contract in place, you know, what we would you know consider the modern prenup, uh, then it really should, again, be between you, the other person, and either your, your church and God, if you do believe in such things. Yeah. And see, uh, and, well, first of all, 
definitely anytime you throw God into led into the way a country or a state is ran, you're gonna have a problem because everybody doesn't believe in God like they would have in the 17, 1800s when we were a states' rights country. And you know, you go back during the time of the founding fathers, first of all, it was a lot less diversity in the country. Second of all, if you were not white, you didn't matter anyway. So now that we have a lot more diversity, a lot more religions, and you are now free to practice those religions, which would not have been the, the case in the 17 and 1800s. You know, a lot of things they said in the Constitution or in the Declaration of Independence were lip service at that time. You know, uh, all men are created equal, for instance, was obviously not true. Same thing with the pursuit of happiness and all of this shit. Whereas, yeah, if you're a white male, but now that all of that stuff is actually true, you can't have a religious-based state legislator because there are a bunch of different religions, a bunch of different cultures, and even different genders that you got to take in play, into, into place where they didn't have to take into consideration back then. Yeah. Uh, and the thing is, uh, like when you say uh, bring God into it with uh, government, that's what I'm saying is take take the marriage completely out of the government's purview. Is And like I said, it should be between the two people uh, and you guys can get married in the eyes of uh, you or in the eyes of your God and church. And then the only legal aspect is just that civil asset division contract agreement. And so you'd be so you'd be totally so you'd be totally okay uh, with same sex marriage. Yeah, I, okay. I don't mind it. I, again, I, I'm I'm a Christian, but at the end of the day, uh, my belief in Christ is my belief in in Christ, and uh, it that's Jesus's job to save you. It's not mine. So. Live your life all you want, and if you get to the pearly gates, that's between you and the Lord. Okay, so someone in the comments, I, you don't have to answer, but if you want, someone in the comments are, are just curious to your age. Someone said, how old is this person? You want to give that? I'm 30 years old. Okay, and the reason, and the reason why you, you, your, your opinions, I suppose, are quite mature, but you sound young, so that's why they're asking that. Uh, government should oh, not you. have I their... I I sounded young. <laughs> <laughs> well... Well, at 30, you are. <laughs> so, Thank but you. Um, yeah, someone said government shouldn't have their hands in everything, which sounds kind of like what you're suggesting. I just, yeah. I, I, I just, the issue I have is that even under states' rights, you essentially have the government having their hands in everything. It's just on a smaller scale. So if you live in Alabama, you don't have to worry about being treated like you live in New York. Because you got states' rights, so Alabamans can get to live like they live in Alabama. However, if you're somebody who moves from New York to Alabama, they're not going to let you bring your New York lifestyle into that state. They're going to start, their laws are going to potentially prohibit you from living the way you were used to living. Like, like I mentioned, say prostitution or drugs, these are things that might be li legal in liberal states. If, well, if you want to, you know, pay for sex, in a Bible Belt state, they're going to throw your ass in jail for that. So it, you're getting states' rights, but you're not getting the freedoms that you're talking about because now they're going to start bending a lot of those freedoms towards Christianity, particularly in the South. If they had their way, a lot of their laws would be based on Christianity. Yeah, I could, I could see that happening and there are certain things that i think should be out of the purview of the uh of the state as well and left to the individual and as right. far as the federal government goes i think they should be involved in almost nothing of the citizens lives uh again that comes down to they fuck everything up and especially when you have you know lifelong appointees or certain politicians that don't have a term limit and they'll tell their people, you know, whatever they want to hear to, you know, remain in power. And uh, they, they're promising all these grandiose things that, let's be honest, never come to fruition. Uh, just to remain in power and what are they going to do? In general, they're not going to try to give up power. They're gonna well, let me... Let me let me ask it to you from I gotta move it on, but I'll give you the last word. But let me ask it to you from this point of view. When you said 
the federal government is liable to fuck everything up compared to the states, right? When you look at someone like me and the way I was brought up in America, black people brought up in America, would we be better off under a states' rights country or federal government? Well, it depends on in what time period you're speaking in regards to, because I think I know where that question is going. I mean, even, uh, even in all honesty, even now, I, I would. I mean, you you really think that um, Alabama would be the way it is if, if they didn't have to worry about the federal government? I mean, there's there. I had a I had a broadcast on here a few days ago where people still believe that sundown towns exist and things like that. Um, even right now, if they could get their way, you don't think that there would be states that would be in favor of segregation and things like that? Uh, I mean, there would be states, like as far as governmental bodies, I think that might. Uh, but in really, uh, that's where the Second Amendment is important. I feel like uh, I'd, I'd, I'd like to think that, you know, a large majority of this country, uh, they're not, you know, racist. They're not. Uh, sexist, they're not, you know, you know homophobic I, I or am... transphobic, and I'd like to think that they would rise up against the government when they see that happening. Yeah, but we let, and what, let me just say this in regards to the Second Amendment. I've made videos about this before. In regards to the Second Amendment, um, preventing tyranny, preventing the you know the government from mistreating its people, we've had the Second Amendment in place since the very beginning, yet. The way the Native Americans are treated, African Americans, women not being able to vote, women got their right to vote in 1920. So I guess the point I'm trying to make is even with the Second Amendment in place, we've had a tremendous amount of tyranny in this country, even well throughout the Martin Luther King era, how they were treating them and all of that. All of that took place while we had Second Amendment rights in this country. So I, while I get your point about the Second Amendment, the Second Amendment, I'm just going to submit the United States as a perfect example that citizens owning guns do not stop tyranny because the United States has proved they can be tyrannical throughout most of we've only been a non tyrannical country. I mean, really, if you want to look at it, I guess gays got the right to vote in what 2015. So <laughs> all from 1776, at least to the Civil Rights Act in 1964. Our country has been totally involved in tyranny, all while the Second Amendment was in place. Um, I wouldn't say that it's even with those time periods, I wouldn't say that it was totally involved in tyranny, because uh, when you look at, you know, what ty tyranny historically was on the world stage, um, you know, places like England and like the Ottoman Empire, those were full tyranny there is one group or one bloodline that ruled over and you know if anybody stepped out of line you were getting beheaded in front of the entire kingdom well if, uh, if, you, and, can't, if you can't vote would you not consider that as being tyrannical if somebody took away your right to your ability to vote at all would you not consider that as tyranny uh it could be uh and but that's given the assumption with our modern system that voting even matters. Uh, and no, that's not a January 6th or Q-esque uh, like election fraud type of statement. Just uh, like take Bernie Sanders, for example, and I am completely anti-Bernie. He had such a huge following, but it didn't matter. It didn't matter. They pushed him out. Look at Tulsi Gabbard, uh, which is actually a Democrat that I was considering. And uh, she was, I mean, still is beloved. There were Republicans that would have voted for her. Ooh, Tulsi Gabbard? But, yes. Tulsi Gabbard is the liberal version of Liz Cheney on the right. She is essentially a politician without a party. The, the liberals would never elect Tulsi Gabbard. And she has too much liberalism in her for the Republicans to ever elect her with any amount of significance. Same thing with Liz Cheney. Tulsi Gabbard has no political future of any significance. She might be able to win one of the lower offices. But yeah, Tulsi Gabbard for president, that well, I don't even well, think. Well, no, I, I think if they would have put her up, up against Trump, a good amount of Republicans would have went for her. 
you, you maybe really not a mass so? amount. Yeah, you really I, think I was, that? Yeah, I was considering uh, Tulsi over Trump. Okay, absolutely. Wow. All right, man. Well, listen, I gotta move it on. Appreciate you coming through. That's an interesting one, though. But I gotta move it on, man. No problem. Just uh, hey, one last thing. Uh, Two way absolutist. Uh, we should have access to every weapon. Uh, any law in the Second Amendment is an infringement and d- deserving of an uprising. What about atomic weapons? Yep, if we can afford them, we should have access to them. And I'm All right. I'm, a, I'm against a felon uh, be, having their right to bear arms removed. Uh, you know, after they've you know recidivized, uh, just because they made now maybe. Maybe like the super what about violent, like what about what what about biological weapons? If you if you had the experience that you could make mustard gas, ricin, ricin, anthrax, would you be okay with citizens owning that biological weapons? Now biological weapons, the are those really considered arms though, or yeah, yeah, they're used. If you're talking about tyranny, well, think about it. When you're talking about tyranny, how many tyrannical leaders have used biological weapons on people? A lot of them. have. That's fair. Yeah, I would. I would be for biological weapons being available to the citizens. <laughs> you try if to the get federal us... government right, and military. Go, can... <laughs> hey, if the I gotta military go. and federal government can have it, we should too. I gotta go. All right, man. Appreciate it. All right, brother. Thank you for having me. All right. Hey. I want to ask that question, and he's now he's not the only person I've heard suggest that in regards to fighting against tyranny, the citizens should have the same weapons as the government. So I have to ask this question: yes or no? Would you be in favor of the Second Amendment being expanded to also include atomic weapons and biological weapons? Should a citizen be able to afford or acquire them? Yes or no. The citizen can own atomic and biological weapons if they have the means to acquire them. Yes or no. I want to, in regards to the Second Amendment, expanding it to up to whatever the government has, armed drones, you name it. If he can afford it, he can get it. Only one person so far has said yes. I'm surprised at that. Oh, somebody, oh, somebody else says, yeah, give them... Give them to teachers in school. <laughs> Miss Smith got ricin. You better listen to what Miss Smith said in, in history class. I heard she got some ricin envelopes in her desk. <laughs> Mr. Peterson got anthrax down the hall. All right, let me look in the comments. Okay. <laughs> wow. I, I I can't imagine that. I cannot imagine that. You have people get depressed, pissed off suicidal i mean how many americans use their firearms to shoot themselves every year or what about um murder suicide pissed off with the wife or take out the whole family what would happen if they had biological weapons i mean you could drive down the block with a big fan on the back of a pickup truck and take out the whole neighborhood you get your hands on some of that. Really? Biological weapons, huh? Okay, all right. <laughs> I don't know where to go with that, but I see a lot of, most of the folks said no, but there there are people, certainly with my last caller and folks in the comments that are saying yes, if the citizens could afford or acquire atomic weapons and biological weapons to prevent tyranny, they should be allowed to have that. Wow. I mean, I'm I'm blown away because just seeing what the 25 and under crowd is doing with pistols and rifles makes it clear that the younger crowd is not mature enough to own that shit. Make no mistake about it, no matter how you feel about the Second Amendment or who can obtain weapons, it's the under 25 crowd that's killing everybody whether it's the mass casualty events or the killings in Chicago, St. Louis, it's, it's 25 and under. That's the folks who are doing all of the killing. You really want to hand them anthrax? Ricin? I'm trying to take out my ops, rival drug dealer, and I see him on a school bus. I'm just going to run beside the 
school bus and throw a whole envelope of anthrax on his lap. Take out the whole school bus. You think um, collateral damage with a pistol or even with an AR is bad. <laughs> You're okay with folks getting their hands on biological weapons. Wow. All right, Papa Bear, let me go back to the car. I, even... I don't even know where to think about that. Um, Papa Bear, talk to me. Damn, Ken, I thought you died, man. Where you been? Vacation. I was in the District of Columbia. Oh, okay. Everybody yeah, got I was a hell sometime. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, w I took a few days off. I actually did a did one live while I was out there, but uh, yeah, I was on vacation. Oh, I, I thought I thought somebody said something wrong and they took you out no. for a while. No. Well, if if I'm off the air. It's going to be because of social media. You can't ever say anything wrong enough to make me get off the air or make me ban a caller. I'm I'm pretty open-minded. And like I said, I make sure everybody gets a chance to get their point across, regardless if I agree or disagree. But what, what do you think about my last caller suggesting that to prevent tyranny, the citizens should have access to atomic weapons if they can afford or acquire them and biological weapons? Uh, well, uh, I just wonder where he's going to be when he goes to the nut house. Which which state? <laughs> well, you know, some, he's, not, he's not the only one I've heard say that. Though. A normal person doesn't require nuclear weapons. I mean, hell, it scared the hell out of me. You know, Trump had to go. Well, yeah. Well, I mean, but they, here, here's the here's the mindset. If you want to prevent the government from becoming tyrannical, you have to have the same weapons as them to be able to fight them off. And our government has, you know, anthrax, ricin, mustard gas, nuclear weapons, armed drones. If you want yeah, to have to blow themselves up. Well, I don't that's think what they that, that would be kind of stupid. I mean, really. I mean, no, I, I see you said, uh, why, why is it crazy? Because he, I disagree. No. I don't. I'm not crazy because I disagree. I went to fight for this country for a reason, and one thing is not to put nuclear weapons in the hand of irresponsible people that actually talk about it. Yeah, you know. And, some, one, and somebody in the comments, Nina Nina Castel Forte said, "I don't believe the government would ever use it on American citizens." Let me let me start by saying, well, first of all, there's the the Tuskegee syphilis experiment which the which is proven that they used they actually deliberately infected a bunch of african american sailors with syphilis so we got one example already obviously when we got pissed off with the japanese we we made them glow in the dark Why, you, you down, point yeah. to you point to saddam hussein you point to the leader in syria or style why do you think america would be excluded from that if you feel like you need guns to prevent tyranny why, if you think of the American government is willing to become tyrannical, which is why you have the Second Amendment, why do you think they would stop at a particular type of weapon? That doesn't make any sense. Now, Go ahead. Tim. It's just it's too scary, though. It's uh, you know, it's too scary to comprehend a normal yeah, person. Yeah, but it's happening all over the world. I know. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, there's. It's just like uh, what did Trump say to uh, Kim Jong Un? Uh, hey, you shoot another missile over that island, we're going to give you fire like you've never seen before. I, missile was shot. What'd he do? He went up there and kissed his ass on the DMZ. You know, whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, you Kim Jong Un. And I, I say that all the time because folks were suggesting that Trump working with Putin and working with Kim Jong Un was making America look much better and folks were respecting us. At the end Not of the really. day, Kim Jong Un didn't do anything that makes America say yeah. I mean, because Trump can only get eight years, so if Kim Jong Un doesn't change his tune, you can't give him credit for what. Well, when Trump was in office, Trump's going to be out of office eventually. So yeah, he and he didn't even wait till Trump was out of office. He was lobbing missiles back over Japan. Mm, yeah, uh, you know it, it's. Yeah, let me see. He's third generation now. Kim is. I'm just really worried about what's coming after him. I mean, seriously. I mean, you know, it seems like the mental capacity of these guys are getting worse every year they get another one. 
and they're all in the same family, so there's something wrong there in that gene pool. Well, I think. well, in, 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 I will give I will give folks this same thing with Iran obtaining a nuclear weapon. For any of my Second Amendment folks who believe that you don't want to give up your gun because if you give up your gun, the government is going to become tyrannic, tyrannical. You have to understand that Kim Jong Un or Il, whatever Kim Jong, I think Il was the father. Kim Jong Un is the same way. He yeah. realizes, particularly now that you got the Ukraine out there who gave up their weapons and look what they're facing. It's showing folks on the world stage that if you get your hands on atomic weapons. Countries like America won't fuck with you. So I, my guess is with Obama, not Obama, Biden telling the Iranians to get back in their Iran deal, they're probably like, hell no, we're going to get ourselves a bomb. Because if you get yourself a nuclear bomb, the United States will leave you alone. Now, and, uh, you know, me and you both being liberals, I'm kind of a middle road liberal. Uh, I don't think Joe Biden's the best one to have the kind of the damn codes either. I mean, seriously. I mean, me senility, senility, man, no matter how you look at it. We I mean, talked you know, about this earlier. Let me ask you this question from a liberal standpoint. We talked about this earlier. Who do you think okay. would be a president? Who do you think would be a better president? Um, president Biden or Kamala Harris? And that guy in Florida. What the hell's his name? <laughs> no, 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 no. We're talking about from a liberal standpoint. If you, well, if you I, had to choose a... I, I would I guess because of the senality, I'd like to have a better choice because I don't really know Tomla that much. You know, I, I heard she did a lot of good things. But yeah, I guess you'd say that she was more apt to be a president. I mean, you know, at least she's young enough. She seems like she has all her faculties. Maybe she's aggressive well, and, enough. And, and that's idea. my and that's the point I'm trying to make for folks who believe that Biden doesn't know where he is half the time or he got dementia or whatever the case, or he's going to be gone soon. How could you not pick Kamala over somebody you think that is a, is a, a weekend at Bernie's type guy? I don't, I don't care how bad you, you may disagree with Kamala's policies. Okay. She's saying, so if you think Bert, if you think Biden is not even amongst his faculties, Kamala should be the guaranteed choice. Yeah, I agree on that. But the deal was is, Joe decided to run too late in life. Well, he ran three. He that, ran. No problem. Yeah, but Joe ran, I think, three, two or three other times. No, Biden has been running for president. He's just been losing. Well, he should, you know, if they'd have kept him four years earlier, maybe they would have been different. I don't know, you know, because I really don't know the man. Now, you know, I do know a few Republicans that I thought would make good presidents. Uh, a lot of people talk about old oh, Joe, you know, fuck Joe, fuck Joe. Well, what the whole deal is, uh, near as I can figure, uh, Nancy was running the White House pretty close from my herd when Reagan had it. Uh, there's a lot of people said you didn't fuck with Nancy because if you did, you, you paid for it. Hey, and I was in the service under that man. So, would you, know, you prefer? Would you prefer a, res a resurgence of Trump in 2024? You think he might be better? No, I still I still have the Hitler Hitler theater on that one. You know, hey, and, and the reason I and the reason I, I ask that is because you often hear folks on the right, particularly my audience, asking, "Are you happy that you voted for Biden now, or or you know, don't you miss Trump?" And I that's my general response is that although the economy under Biden is shit. Folks do remember why they voted Trump out, and they didn't vote Trump out because the economy was shit. They, the stuff they voted Trump out for is still there. So even if yeah, you vote Trump well. back in to get a good economy, the stuff you voted him out for still exists. We got to find an equal uh, position there. We got to have someone that can run a business. So you know, plus plus what about actually Newsom? be a politician Somebody, that can deal with it. What about Newsom out in California, Gavin Newsom? Mm, I'm not really familiar with him. I'm not, I mean, I'm stuck here in Montana. I, I keep checking on my Florida politics and California. I mean, there was someone who was talking about what was it the other day about a Republican didn't get in the state uh, uh, government of California or whatever. California didn't have a great uh, a governor that was Republican for years and years. 
Well, hell, I remember when I was a kid, the Modesto B said straight out, you know, why, why shouldn't we have an actor as a president? We've had a clown already. And they were talking <laughs> about Ronald Reagan. Wow. I mean, well, you know, Reagan, Reagan, Reagan turned out to be a rather good president, though. I, I agree. I agree. I, I, I raised my hand on the count of that man. You know, from as a, soon as he, from he a got liberal, him, I, I put it up. Okay, from a liberal standpoint, what about Pete Buttigieg? Mm. I'm not real sure about Pete. I, I really aren't. I, you know, all I've seen him do is the debates, and it seems to me that he's leaning a little bit further than I want to go, really. And I'm not talking about because he's gay or this, that, and the other. I just think that he would want to try to make an example of this. You know, everybody said, well, when Obama got elected, you know, it was going to be a, a big deal. It was going to be all this black, black, black. It wasn't that. It was a good man trying to do a good job. He tried to do the best he fucking could. So you know? give, me, give, me a, give me a liberal. Give me a liberal that you could think of that you would favor being elected to president. Hmm. Oh. Uh, Graham, I think he's too old now. <laughs> Who? Out of Florida's old governor, Graham. I worked under that guy. Graham? What's the yeah. Florida. Back in the 70s. 80s. Oh, yeah, he's too old. Yeah, he's too old. Well, definitely, you know. I mean... That's the best you got is somebody... <laughs> you might as well somebody, be fighting. Hey, hey man, let me tell you. Right now, the, the, the way things have been going... With everything is, you know, here I, I all I hear is either negative Biden or negative Trump. That's that's all you can hear on this thing. If you use, yeah, but if you media, watch, if you if you're a liberal and you watch left wing media, you should have somebody on the left that you don't think is that bad. I don't really, I really don't. I'm I'm waiting to see who tries to run, and then I'm going to make my decision when I. Start researching them. You know, wow. hey, when you got okay. 50 damn people deciding to run, you don't need to, you need to pick the ones you're going to get to run it. You know, what do you think about it? She's too young, but what do you think about AOC, Alexandria Ocasio Cortez? That might be a decent ch chance. And that, and that would wow. be a first, too. You, you picked, boot, boot, you stated that Pete Buttigieg is too far to the left. But you think AOC? <laughs> you, that's oh, different. I, I didn't expect might, to hear that. What, what the deal is is right now I have no what's going to happen here. I'm thinking no. straight out. Kamala's coming up. You know uh, they're going to Biden's going to throw his shit behind her. The party's going to throw it, and then hopefully they have a good person on the Republican ticket that's worth voting for. Right now, that'll at least give her a good run. And I honestly believe that if anybody wins this election and they don't go and say, oh, they're cheating, they're cheating, I hope it is a Republican where maybe we can yell you cheated for the election for, for the whole day. Well, well, we did that when Hillary Clinton lost. We did yell you cheated oh, when Hillary Clinton lost. Well, that was like the, the – that choice right there was the lesser of two evils, man. Seriously. I mean, You're not the first know, to say that. I'm not, um, and um, hell, you know, we get right down to it. Bill wasn't the greatest guy in the world, but at least he was a decent businessman, and he did balance the budget. The only man that's ever done that. But you know, that where he true. stuck his, where he stuck his stuff, that doesn't bother me a bit, man. I mean, hell, you know, sex yeah, life ain't running was, the country. He was working, yeah, but he also was working with Newt Gingrich. That would be like Biden and Mitch McConnell coming together. That ain't going to happen. Hey, but look, yeah. I got to move it on, man. Appreciate you coming hey, yeah. through. Hey, yeah, I, I just was worried about you, man. Oh, uh, I, I, you I appreciate that. Appreciate the sentiment. Feel free to drop me a DM or something anytime, man. I'm always here. Appreciate okay. it, though. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Triple Thread put in the comments, Captain and Tennille. Oh my, <laughs> I'm 50. And that, you yeah, you gotta be, some, love will keep us together. How old is Captain and Tennille? Wow. Okay, let me go back to the comments. The Black Wing.
Now that's a hell of a name, man. Where do, 62. Where do all I? Right, freaking, all right, 62. Where do I freaking start? What's going on, Happy Liberal? Let me say this for real talk, man. I can't stand Talkin'. Trump. I I can't stand that man. I can't stand the wave in his fucking head. I can't stand his damn stupid up <laughs> foreign ass. Let me say this: the only wife I miss of his is Ivanka. Lord rest your soul, boo boo. You was a true trooper. <laughs> I can't. St- let me give you something. Let me interrupt. I'll let you continue. But here's something I I seen on Facebook. I think it was. They had a picture of his ex wife Ivanka and him together from back in the day, and it was captioned, "It would be nice if they reunited." I would have. I would have. Here's the thing. I, let me just say this for real talk. I would have rather choose Ivanka than Melania. I'm going like this. Melania was so damn dumb. Huh? How the freak you copy off a of Michelle Obama speech and said you wrote it? Uh, can, and, 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 can, 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 I, can I just say this for real talk? But people Go. are saying, oh, but here's the thing. But, three, but black women put him with the 3.6%. It was already going down when Obama, when Obama was president. What about the so point that? Tr- but you don't get Trump any credit at all for the economy? Hell no! Let me say, no. Let me say this for real talk. One million people are dead including three of my relatives. One was my father, the other one was my brother. I'm going like this. This COVID, he said, this is how stupid basic people are. He said to inject, inject disinfectant into their body. A dude went into Walmart, stole two things of bleach and drunk it before the police showed up. Did that uh, really no, happen? That really happened. No, I got one to top that one. Uh, when he said, oh, we should basically put our stuff under the heat lamps to basically because COVID can't stay in heat. A dude literally went into Waffle House, got butt naked, and went under a heat lamp, and Lily basically said, but Trump said so. <laughs> You're killing me, man. You're killing me. Oh, my God. <laughs> we are, here's the thing. We are bitch wanting to complain of putting a, putting a piece of paper or basically a cloth over our faces or getting a vaccine because this is too stupid to make up. But well, there are nanites in the base of the vaccines and they are tracking us. It's called a cell phone, bitch. That's how they track you. <laughs> I ain't got to do nothing but let you go, man. You killing it. I'm letting you talk. <laughs> you no, got no, my no, jaw no. dirty. <laughs> yeah, they big and jack. No, I want to. I wanted to picture for anybody that said 2020, 2024. I want you to listen to this. They bring in drugs. They bring in gas. They bring in crime. Hey, see me, see me, get people. I'm, I have a great relationship with the blacks. I've always had a great relationship with the blacks. So I'm with the blacks now, for real. These are actually his statements. Oh, if, if, what, here's the, what, if, what if, about if, the notion, and I get this from a lot of my MAGA folks, the notion that Trump was actually well-liked by the African community. Oh, but, wait, Betty, let me ask you this question. If someone were to ask you, what has Trump ever did to make you refer to him as racist? How would you answer that? Dude, Central Park Five. Do I have to bring it? This man. Go ahead. This man wanted five 15 and 16 year olds dead because of a, of a crime they didn't commit. And he but wanted to be the. But what if he actually believed that at the time that they actually did do that to that girl? He still believes that those kids, those damn, those teenagers at the time that spent 15 years of their life in jail, in jail, they still did it. He still believes that. Give me that. something else. Okay, give me something. What else you got? Oh, how basically how Mexicans are ruining this freaking country and we should basically, the internment camps. Should y'all bring those up? I was going like this. There were literally internment camps on the border. We literally what see World say, War II. Wait, wait, what do you mean when you say internment camps? You didn't see those pictures? You didn't see those pictures of an internment camps on the border. They literally had concentration camps for people that was immigrating from El Salvador and Mexico into the United States. They literally had them in internment camps. Those, those, they were literally separating families, but we supposed to be on family values. But fuck you! Uh, what about the claim that Obama was doing the same thing? Obama basically, I don't think, here thing. First of all, let me put it out there. The only reason that you voted for Obama because he was, he was kind of black. He wasn't no full-fledged. Y'all, y'all wasn't going to put no whole nigga from Chicago in the goddamn White House. 
What do you want? What do you want on the stage? Stretch from Naughty by Nature? I mean, he was black. I mean, Obama was a black man. Just like Camilla Harris. <laughs> and here's the thing. I come from the Bay Area. Camilla Harris, Cory Booker, and Barack Obama were black enough, enough to be in office. Give me a politician, in your humble opinion, that you think is quote unquote black enough to be in office. If I'm basically gonna go with the Democratic Party, let me just say this real what, talk. Whatever party, whatever I'll, party you, whatever party you favor. Okay, let me say the Republicans. Y'all really thought her, Mike Hickam, my um, Mike Huckabee, and also Herman Cain, Lord rest his soul, were good candidates. Y'all think that y'all even try to basically make Colin, Colin Powell didn't even want to run, run for the Republican Party. He was going like this. Oh, hell no. Y'all ain't put me in this shit. I ra- I rather vote. Can I just basically be real? I rather vote for a candidate that basically going to figure figure out one thing. How are we going to fix this bitch that that's, that's, we know is America? Fix this bitch. That's what I want. Well, fix this yeah, damn you, country. You can't, you can't just fix this bitch because there's a lot of folks who... You got to be like, for instance, if you want to fix the divide on abortion, for instance, there's no solution that's going to please everybody. You want to fix the issues with the Second Amendment. There's no solution. Let me me, me get on. Let me get on that. If y'all was going into the abortion system, why you ain't fix the foster care and the adoption system? Now, that's a good point. But give me the person that's black enough. I didn't hear that on the liberal side. I'm going like this. I want to basic. I would say the closest one I can think of is Stacey Abrams. Nina Turner, um, um, Maxine Waters. That's basically what, I, that's just off the top of my head. Um, Maxine um, Waters? And I said black enough. I didn't say, just going like this, Shit. Maxine. But if I was going to pick, I would pick Nina Turner. I would pick Nina Turner. That would be okay. a good ass president. For, I, here's the thing. I'll pick Mark Cuban. <laughs> <laughs> Not, you know, you know so I'm not opposed to Mark Cuban. I mean, he's he's done a few things here and there that I'm not a fan of, but I wouldn't be totally opposed to Mark to um to uh, Mark Cuban. I'm just going like this. Can I just say if we have ten different different parties in this country? Why are we choosing lesser between two evils? Why are we choosing Money. the Crips of the Bloods and the Rep- Crips and the Bloods before the Crips and the Bloods? Why are we choosing them? Basically, we choose because the Crips and the Bloods got blues. all the money. But we have the American Independence Party. We have the damn Green Party. We have the um, we have the we have we have the Communist Party. We have every we have people that's not even a, a part of a party, but still considered a vote. I'm going like this. If we're gonna do that, if okay, let me. I'll give you an example. Before before you got on my previous caller, we were talking about decent. He was a liberal, and we were talking about decent liberals and. Some of the folks I had named, he was responding by, I haven't heard and really heard enough about them to give you an opinion. And the point I'm trying to make is that you only have two parties because you need money. The only way people are going to hear about you to make a decision on whether to vote for you or not is that you have to have enough money to do TV commercials, radio ads, internet. If you don't have enough money, you might be the best the comedian best in the world. You might be the best, the best politician in the world. And nobody knows who you are. No. We, the best option, Republicans, I want y'all to listen to me. The best option you had as a, as a president for four years is a five-time bankrupt that can't even sell vodka, that can't even sell alcohol, that, <laughs> that literally, literally has sexual assault damn charges from basic people as young as 14 that literally cheated on his wife with a porn star, which he raw dogged while he was president while he was coming into presidency, this who y'all choose. And here's the weird part. I'm an essential worker. I'm an essential worker. I work security. I'm going like this. While the pandemic was going, why we didn't get into hazard pay? Why we didn't get hazard pay? I would have voted for Trump for another four years if would have gave us hazard pay. Did Just you support that. him? In, did you go Trump in 2016? Hell no. I stayed home. I didn't. I did not. I didn't like. I didn't like Hillary. I didn't. Here's the thing. For the Democratic Party, stop shoving Hillary down our throats. Wait, stop wait a minute. Let me, ask, let me ask you something in regards to that. Uh, real quick, are you pro-choice or pro-life? I'm pro-choice. Are you a fan I'm, of the the six to three majority of the Republicans have on the Supreme Court? No, because two of them, here's the thing. 
One of them was a secretary. She wasn't even a damn a lawyer. She was a secretary. And you put her as the highest damned honor that you can give a that you can give a lawyer? And let me no, go over Brett Kavanaugh. No, no, let me go over Brett Kavanaugh. Brett Kavanaugh, okay, you I, literally have I get you your really point. Okay. All right, let me say this. I get your point. The reason why I asked you those questions is because I asked you, did you vote for Hillary Clinton? Your response was, no, I stayed home. You didn't like Hillary Clinton. And what I'm trying to get across to you is by you staying home and not supporting Hillary Clinton like a lot of liberals did, all of this shit that I asked you after that that you don't like, you're partially responsible for that. The six to three admit, Supreme admit, Court majority. I admit, I, admit, I admit that. I admit that. I should have. Here's the thing. But the only thing is, though, the damn third party candidates was even worse. Can I just say this? This is how bad this 2016 election was. We literally had a person that was winning for 9% that was named D's Nuts. <laughs> I do remember that 15 year old child, D's Nuts. I do remember that. But I, but I, I had, think that point. And, we had he had nine percent of he had nine percent of, of 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 his he had nine percent of the votes in America nine percent. I, I do you know I need to put my name down and shit the handsome liberal fuck that I take nine percent. We were both, <laughs> we were, here's the thing this is how dumb the the 2016 election was people were writing in candidates like Harambe, um um the shredder from damn Ninja Turtles. I wish I was freaking lying. I swear, I don't know if this America or the movie Idiotic State. Yeah. And by the way, somebody asked, is these nuts real? Yeah, there was a 15-year-old child that, that got, got on the ballot, and he was going under the name these Nuts, and he was getting and, votes. Not enough to win, but he was getting enough votes to get an interview. Yeah, you, you can Google it, you know, uh, candidate D's Nuts, D-double-E-Z, Nuts. He ran out. Yeah, he was he was running as a candidate. Fifteen was, years old. Was, then the tw- here's the thing. Then, then 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 Trump won. Then Trump won. And let me just say this. All here's the thing for all these damn supremacists that basically came out. Y'all were showing y'all asses when this man was was elected president. Charlottesville. He defended y'all saying that we give people they give people a, they give people a many sides a many sides. It should be no reason why I know how to do a damn good impression of the forty fourth president. No. So, all I can say is, I think you pretty much wrapped it up when you said you sat out 2016. That is a lot of what the Democrats did. They were pissed off that Bernie didn't win, or they just didn't no, like I, Hillary I, Clinton. I, I, no, it ain't yeah. the fact I didn't like. It didn't like. It did, here's the thing. I it ain't the fact I didn't like Hillary. It's the fact that basically this right. It's what it was Republican versus Republican light. But at least I can say this for at least I can say this for Hillary. Hillary, when it came down to those debates, she killed that man. She yeah. literally. But when it came down to Joe Biden, here's the thing: when it came down to 2020's election, a fly got more camera time than y'all than y'all damn candidates. Well, I'm just simply saying for liberals who didn't vote for Hillary Clinton. Don't complain about the 6-3 majority, the loss of Roe versus Wade or any of that shit, because if you didn't vote for Hillary, you're part of that. You're part. Going, she didn't lose by a lot. She didn't lose no, by a lot in some of those states. She and, did, yeah, she did. I would say that. No, a lot no, of liberals. No, wasn't no, no. She won the popular vote. She didn't win the electorally. She didn't win electorally. That's what happened. Right. It, she won the popular vote. She was up to 2 million. The same her thing. You know what? This, you know how I know this happened before? Al Gore beat B- George W. Bush by the popular and electorally, but Bush became president. Yeah, but the point, pre- the point I'm simply trying to make is that it's like in states like Wisconsin, where Hillary Clinton didn't lose by much, had the Wisconsinites, the folks in Milwaukee, for instance, in Madison, in those urban areas that were anti-Hillary because they wanted Bernie Sanders, all of those college kids, if they hadn't went out and voted, that's one state that would have went to Hillary Clinton, and probably Michigan and Ohio and some of those other states, too. The liberals lost that election for the Democrats. And can I just say this for all y'all MAGAs? Can I just say this? Make America great again. When was America great? Because No answer say this for that. A, <laughs> can I just say this? We, this is two black men talking. I'm going like this. It's just all that fucked up. <laughs> And it's but let me make something. Up, it's been fucked up for a year for us. But let me make something clear to you. 
although Trump has taken a lot of ridicule for that state for that slogan, um, he didn't. He's not the first to use that. I believe it was Reagan. Most, Reagan came up. Reagan with the, and Bill. Clinton. Right, and Bill Clinton yeah. used it as Bill Clinton used it as well. In fact, I got yeah. the. I used to have up yeah, on right. my screen. Go ahead. But let me just say this. Asking him, here's the thing. Y'all saying that Reagan was a good president. If Reagan was the worst. Reagan, here's the thing. I'm not going to lie. It was a boom in the comedy that he had. But I'm going like this, though. The crack epidemic, he was funding basically a war in Nicaragua, a silent war in Nicaragua that the CIA was literally funding through the crack epidemics in the hoods. And well, two, some of that's Reaganomics. Some, yeah, Reaganomics. Some of that's Trick Some of that's fun. Tricking out. Tricking out economics having work. And can I just basically say this? This is the only president that thought ketchup was a ketchup was a vegetable. <laughs> All right, man. Tell I gotta me I'm go. lying. I gotta go. <laughs> All right, man. Catch you later. All right. Real quick, um, as you as you see on the monitor, that was the Reagan slogan, let's make America great again. Reagan 1980, they're behind me on the monitor. So, yeah, Trump is not the first person to coin making America great again. And, of course, um, Bill Clinton used it also on a uh, campaign speech about making America great. So it didn't come from Trump. So for folks who are suggesting that it's a dog whistle to racism and things like that, that Trump has said make America great again, he's not the first to say it. So just wanted to bring that out, point that out to you. Listen, folks, I do appreciate you coming by. I do got to wrap this up. Got to go to work just like everyone else in the morning. You know what they say? Pull yourself up by your bootstraps, all that good shit. Uh, real quick, looking in the comments here, ben Cl Bill Clinton used it too. Yeah. Trump thought ketchup was a wall de decoration. Come on now. <laughs> Trump Supreme Court winning, winning, winning. That is true. And for that, I will hold up the hat that I don't normally like to hold up, but he did suggest that if he got elected, you would be tired of winning. And despite the impeachments, January 6th, right now, that does seem to be the case. But we'll see. January 6th may not go in his favor. I don't think January 6th is looking good for the Trump administration at all. But then again, I've been wrong before. And that guy has a tendency to survive the unsurvivable. Anyhow, folks, I got to catch you later. Appreciate you coming through. It's your boy, Tim, the handsome liberal. Catch you tomorrow.